I've got a bit of a confession to make. This is the lambing shed here at Tatton Park. And as you can see, there are no lambs in here. They've all gone outside. And that is because I have missed lambing. I've been off work for the past two weeks on paternity leave. We have a new gorgeous little baby living in our house a little Benjamin, uh, which meant I've been off work for two weeks and I've missed the lambing. Uh, absolutely gutted, but it's all gone really, really well. We've got lots of beautiful lambs here at the park and I think it's only right that we go and get some more information on those lambs and for that, we're gonna speak to Ellie. So I've managed to miss the whole of lambing, which I feel really, really bad about, but somebody who took care of the whole thing and made sure it ran really smoothly is Ellie. So we saw Ellie on our first video for scanning the sheep and now the, the end story is here. Ellie, how's it all gone? It's gone really, really well. It was really quick. It was all done and dusted within a week, which was just amazing because it meant a lot less sleepless nights for me. And um, we've had 32 lambs in total. We had a completely even split of ewes and tups, which is really unusual, but quite a nice little fact there. Um, and they're all doing really well. We had some really big lambs, which Brilliant. means the ewes were, yeah, in good condition. And were there any difficulties that you had to get involved with and intervene with? Because it's a skill doing that. Yeah, we did. We had some big single lambs. I had four of them were into a, a single, um, and one or, or two of those deliveries were, yeah. were a bit um, difficult. But we did. We got there. Um, you know, had a lot of good practice this year with delivering big singles, so that can only be a good thing. And did you manage to c catch up on your sleep? Was a lot of it late night and in the middle of the night? Well, it you know, they love a nighttime lambing, don't they? So there was a lot of nights, but because it was a small space of time, uh, we did manage to get a little bit of sleep. So every three, four hours, um, right in the thick of that week, but then I, I've been able to get it out of the way. Well, so. they look great. And just Today. explain to us a little bit about the numbers that are sprayed on the side of them. What are they? Well, obviously they're out in the field now. So to make sure we don't lose any, they've all got their mum's number sprayed awesome. on the side. So if anything, you know, if one of them didn't look so good, we would know exactly which you that lamb belonged to. You can see, can you see that massive one in the middle over there? We'll, go and, have a look at, we'll go and have yeah. a look at him. <laughs> Wow, and they look great. There's a real good size in them. What are they? They're about two weeks old now, are they? Yeah, two weeks max. Yeah. Um, you can see them behind. Um, so the one without the number, just behind number 65 yeah. here, that was the biggest lamb I've ever, ever had to lamb. You can see the Suffolk in it. It's got that real suffolk head head um, and real big, deep chest. So he, wow. she even was very good. Well, they look great and all the hard work's paid off. Yeah. So it's done. Lambing's boxed off. Done, dusted. It's your calf next. Calving next, yeah. that's it. And these are the Cade lambs. Absolutely love them. We've got three. Uh, and they're not orphans. And they've not been neglected by mum. But they've just been uh, triplets and extra lambs that mums can't rear. Because sheep can only really successfully have two lambs and feed both of them because they've got two teats on the udder. Well, he's nibbling my finger. Uh, so if they have triplets or quads, there's always a lamb that doesn't get as much milk off its mum as it needs to. Now, on a big sheep farm where they've got hundreds of sheep lambing, what can often happen is they can foster lambs on. Uh, so if a sheep, say, had a single, which is one lamb, uh, and a sheep next door's had three, they'll foster one of those extra lambs onto the sheep that's had the single, and they'll do it that way. But because we don't lamb a huge amount of sheep here, what we do with our extra lambs is we take them off, and we'll bottle feed them, and they'll go on to be our sheep racers in the summer here at Tatton Park. So um, our little cade lambs often get they're eating my finger now while I'm holding my phone. Uh, they get the VIP lifestyle, they get this little penthouse, they get fed every four hours at the minute. And they're always up to mischief. So yeah, these will have the absolute life of luxury. When bury our Jersey cow calves in a few weeks time, uh, these little guys will have a, a diet of full fat Jersey milk. So they'll be like little barrels on legs, but they're absolutely lovely. There is one animal that will feature in most of the Sam on the Farm videos, and that animal is Fly. Yeah, Fly is my four-year-old Welsh Border Collie, and she's an absolute babe. She came to live with me four years ago. I bought her as a puppy from a cattle market, and they were having a puppy sale, and I just fell in love with her straight away. And it's a bit of a Jack in the Beanstalk story, really because I used the money that I'd made from some Hereford bulls that I'd sold 
to buy fly. Didn't use all of it. Didn't get a bag of magic beans. Uh, but I did come home to tell my dad that I'd used the check to buy a little puppy. And it was the best thing that I've ever done. And she's great. She's really good with livestock. She's kind of trained a little bit. Um, most of it is instinct and she's so clever. Yeah, those of you that have got Border Collies at home or have had anything to do with them will know that they've got such instinct. She doesn't miss a thing. They really are so, so loyal and I'm so lucky to have this little one next to me all the time.